You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode we're going to show you how to make your very own desktop sized Tesla coil. So before we begin, you guys should know the Tesla coil that we're going to be making is going to be nowhere near the output of, for instance, a Tesla coil like this. But in the future, I will make videos on how to make a Tesla coil like this one and how to make it musical. And so here's the circuit that we're going to be using for this. As you can see, this circuit is very simple and should be very easy to build. On the input voltage, we can put anywhere from around 20 volts to probably around 50. And so to break down some parts of the circuit, basically here we have a voltage divider. This voltage divider is extremely necessary because any voltage of 20 volts will break down the gate source connection. And by that, of course, I just mean the gate to source connection on the MOSFET. But the formula for calculating the output voltage of this voltage divider is going to be the voltage out is going to be equal to the voltage in times resistor 2 over resistance 1 plus resistor 2. And then that all is just going to give you the output voltage that will be coming off of this centered half of the potentiometer here. Now more traditionally, you'll see a voltage divider such as this. Where this top side here is going to be connected to positive, the bottom side here is going to be connected to negative. Then the center tap between these is going to be your voltage out connected up also to the negative. And in that case, this would be your R1 and this would be your R2. And technically, that's still what's happening up here, except for everything above that tap on the potentiometer is counted as that first resistor. And then everything below that tap is going to be counted as the resistor 2 in the formula. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and start off with the hardest part, which is going to be creating this coil here. And so here I have that coil wound. This took me probably around 30 minutes to wind up around this. Although the dimensions aren't super critical, the diameter I have here is around 30 millimeters and then I have approximately 400 turns of 32 gauge magnet wire going up here. Now magnet wire in case you don't know is just copper wire with a thin enamel coating over it. Now while you're winding this so you don't let all the wire unwind what I like to do is take a strip of tape and put it from the bottom to the top. I'll begin by putting the first bit of wire underneath the strip of tape and then winding up and then in case you need to take a break you can just peel back the tape stick the wire there then cover it back up and so that way it should keep your wire from unraveling. And then when I was done I put these two strips of electrical tape on either end to also help prevent it from unraveling. And lastly, just be sure that you have enough wire going off the ends so that you'll be able to connect it up. Okay, and now let's work on this primary coil. Now since this will be generating high voltages, I found if the primary coil touches the secondary coil, it'll arc over to it. This has the potential to damage your secondary coil and leave burn marks on it. And so to get around that, I cut this sheet of paper that I'm going to wrap around this to create a tube. Now I have that tube cut out so it can loosely slide over this. And so now I'm going to take this tube and wrap it in some electrical tape. This should hopefully provide plenty of insulation between the secondary and primary coil. And so now I'm going to take this strand of wire and wrap it around this tube once. As you can see, in order to secure it, I just put two little strips of tape on it. And so now we should just be able to slide this tube over the Tesla coil secondary. And now with the two coils done, let's go ahead and move on to the rest of the circuit. And so the next component we have is this one microfarad 50 volt capacitor. And so I'm just going to insert the capacitor between the positive and negative rail. And now we're going to be putting an about 50 ohm resistor between the positive rail and another rail over here. It doesn't have to be exactly 50 ohms. In fact, this one right here is around 66 ohms. And then next we have our potentiometer. The center pin is going to be our center tap that goes right here. And the other two pins are just going to be the top and bottom part of the resistor. And so I'm going to insert that as so that one of the legs is connected to the resistor, then the other two are going to be on their own independent rails. Next here we have our power transistor. As I said, I personally am going to be using this IRFP260N. But most other power transistors should also work fine for this. Now on the power transistor, this side's the gate, this side's the source, and this side is the drain. And so going back to this, from left to right, we have our gate, our drain, and our source. Now during the tuning and operation, this has a potential to get quite hot. And so you're going to want to put some thermal grease on the back of it and connect it up to a heat sink. Now thermal grease acts as a very good conductor of heat. And so it will help the transistor get rid of the heat from it and onto the heat sink. And so now with that successfully attached to the heat sink, let's go ahead and insert it into the board right around here. And so now I'm going to connect a wire from the center tap of the potentiometer. And I'm going to bring it over here and connect it to the gate of our transistor. And as you can see, also connected to the gate of the transistor is going to be one end of our secondary coil. Now remember, since this is magnet wire, you're going to need to either burn or sand off the varnish so that it will be able to conduct efficiently. And so here I have one end of it connected to a jumper wire, and I'm just going to connect that to our gate. And now the final empty pin on the potentiometer needs to be connected to our negative rail. And now one end of our primary coil needs to be connected to the positive rail. And then lastly, we need to connect a wire from the source of our transistor to the negative rail. And now with that done, that should be everything. Now we're going to connect this up to the power, but before you do, make sure that your potentiometer is turned all the way to the right. Because if you don't, when you turn it on, due to the voltage divider formula we were talking about before, it'll be a too high of voltage and destroy your transistor. For initial testing, I'm going to be using this variable DC power supply I have, and I'm going to first do my testing at around 20 volts. And so now with it plugged in, I'm going to slowly turn this potentiometer until we can see if anything shows up. As you can see, we're getting a slight corona discharge off the top of this. Now, right when you first get that purple discharge, stop turning the potentiometer. Now, if you first turn this on and after adjusting it just a little bit, you still don't see that purple arc, then go ahead and try flipping the connections on this primary coil and you should see the purple arc then. Now I have my power supply set up to 30 volts and I'm going to retune this potentiometer.
And as you can see, we're getting quite a bit more discharge off the top of it. Now due to the skin effect, the electricity will stay on the outside of your skin so it's safe to touch. But still, since the plasma is at such a high temperature, when it touches your skin, it'll char instantly. Okay, now that we know that it works fine, I'm going to go ahead and take everything here and put it onto a board. And now I have everything on this circuit board. As you can see on the top, I attached the wire to a sewing needle. This will provide a good discharge point for the electrical arcs. Now let's go ahead and make sure it still works by turning this potentiometer. As you can see, we're getting that purple discharge corona. So currently I am powering this off of the 32 volts from the power supply I have. However, if I didn't have this power supply, and one change I'll probably make in the future is to be able to run it off of a laptop power source. Now I have my power supply set to around 18 volts so we can see what the laptop power supply would look like. As you can see, it'd just be this very small discharge arc. So basically what I'd use for the laptop power supply is a boost converter. Basically what a boost converter does is take an input DC voltage and it puts it up to a higher DC voltage. And so then using a boost converter like that I can get the larger arcs just running off of a simple plug-in laptop power supply. Now as you can see, just like a regular Tesla coil, this will light up things like neon lamps from fairly far away. And of course it will also light up fluorescent bulbs like this. What happened just barely was that small capacitor that I was using blew up. So I was thinking about why this capacitor exploded, and I think rather than being the voltage rating, it was actually more of a fact that it couldn't handle the frequency at which it was required to recharge and discharge. And I think even if I had a very high voltage 1 micropair at electrolytic capacitor, it still wouldn't be able to handle it. And so instead I'm going to use some of these MPK capacitors to get the 1 micropair that I need. And as far as I'm concerned, these capacitors should be able to handle that high resonant frequency. Okay, I have it all hooked up again only with these two capacitors here instead. Let's go ahead and turn it and see if it gives us an arc. Yeah, there we go. So it's the same arc as before, except for the capacitors won't explode this time, hopefully. So now you know how to make your very own desktop-sized Tesla coil. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it and or learned something new, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a thumbs up as it really helps the channel. If you have any suggestions for videos you'd like to see, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you'd like to see my weekly science videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so they'll show up in your subscription newsfeed. That's all for this video, so please remember to be safe and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, due to a high request, we're going to be sending music through lasers.